aside from the fact that it is one of the most well-known watch brands in the world, Rolex also serves as a symbol of success, luxury, and excellent workmanship. The fact that watch aficionados and collectors adore it so much shouldn't come as much of a surprise to anyone. However, not every Rolex model has been met with such a positive response from customers, some of them for various reasons. In this video, we will discuss some of these infamous Rolex watches and why they don't get talked about a lot. Welcome to Lux Life, and when it comes to luxury and lifestyle, we've got you covered. But before we begin, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Now, let's start! Number 1. Rolex Cellini Dress watches and fully functioning timepieces for professional and sporting endeavors are Rolex's specialty, and the Rolex Cellini line from the 1960s is no exception to this rule. In 2014, the Cellini collection had a little update that included adding some whimsical details to the bezels and dials, compared to some of the previous models which were more intricate, the new pieces would have seemed like a walk in the park. Still, this wasn't enough for the average Rolex buyer to change their mind. Most people love Rolex for its tool watches and not so much for its dress watches. This has hurt the value of the Cellini line since they don't sell for much in the pre-owned market because there isn't much demand for them. The Cellinis look very impressive on paper because of their design, size, and detailed elegant styling. These are typical parts of a successful recipe in the watch market. Compared to the other lines, why are they rarely seen in public? It's possible that not having a distinct brand or a proven history of innovative design was a major influence. Rolex's rebranding effort for this collection was an attempt to give it a more enduring identity. At first, the Cellini time date and dual time only came with conventional dial selections and precious metals. However, subsequent versions included a 39mm non-oyster case with brand new hands, dials, fluted bezels, and indices. Unfortunately, the damage was already done. Number 2. Rolex Milgauss The Rolex Milgauss seems to be another line that doesn't sell very well. The name comes from the French word mill, which means a thousand, and the scientific word gauss, which means to measure magnetic fields. This means that the watch is safe from magnetic fields of up to 1,000 gauss. The brand's past is fascinating, yet there was a time when you could have gotten a Rolex mill gauss for free. Many in the watch industry utilize this as a negotiating tool or technique to upsell customers to more expensive Rolex watches. Then why did it fail to get much support? The Milgauss is Rolex's attempt to help protect engineers and scientists from electromagnetic fields and disturbance. This wasn't a market everyone was interested in, especially considering the meteoric rise in popularity of other models like the Submariner, Daytona, and GMT. Another possible explanation for the Rolex Milgauss's lack of notoriety is that it was released around the same time as other renowned horology pieces like the Oyster Perpetual, which was quite similar to the Milgauss, save for its magnetic shield. Both used caliber 3131 movements. However, the Milgauss was $2,000 more expensive despite providing no added value. Number 3. The Rolex Sky Dweller Sky Dweller Rolex's most innovative and futuristic watch to date was released in 2012. It was easy to use on a daily basis because of the watch's dual time zone and year-long calendar, both of which were managed via the ring command bezel. Since it was first revealed, the way it looks has caused a lot of debate. Rolex first made the Sky Dweller in precious metals, which made a statement when paired with a 42mm size but when a new version with a white gold bezel came out in 2017, it wasn't as unique anymore. It felt like an exact copy of the famous Day Just, from which the Sky Dweller took ideas but probably went too far. In a nutshell, 
it looks like a slightly bigger version of the Datejust 41, which was also released in 2017 and had a GMT function and a yearly calendar. In your opinion, what could Rolex have done differently to make these models stand out more? Also, what other models did this video leave out that you think aren't as popular? Let us know in the comments below. Number 4. Rolex Air King One of the simplest Rolexes ever created, it debuted in the 1940s as a reward to army pilots. It has a chronometer movement, an oyster casing, no screw down crown, and no date. So it's virtually a Rolex down to the last detail. It was as good as a Rolex for the dedicated few, but it retired in 2014. Soon after, a new Air King with a much more outgoing style and a nice backstory came out. This was a direct reference to the Air King 116900, unveiled at Basel World in 2016. It was a 40mm version with a black dial and an oyster bracelet, which seemed to be one of the things every fan wanted. The first problem was that many people couldn't get over the yellow crown with a corporate green Rolex look. The Air King was mostly ignored because of its bulky size. The standard user would find it difficult and awkward to wear on the wrist because of its size. Since pilots are niche market, tool watches tend to have cluttered dials that turn off the general public. Number 5. The Rolex Yatmaster This is another wristwatch that is not particularly well liked by consumers since its introduction in 1992. It has been one of Rolex's latter models. It had a sturdy case, great water resistance, a date magnifier, the signature oyster band, and a folding clasp that makes Rolexes so desirable. And it was built for boating or time raising. It came out in both 40mm and 42mm formats as well. Unfortunately, this series wasn't catching the attention of serious watch enthusiasts in significant numbers. Some people thought it was too expensive, especially since it came with a rubber strap. Many people couldn't tell if it was a dress or sports watch, so it felt like the watch didn't know who it was. The Rolex Submariner and the Rolex Yatmaster have very similar mechanisms. A lot of people didn't like the way the bezel was made, and it looked a little too much like the Submariner which was cheaper, more popular, and looked better while doing different things. We're not saying that these watches aren't good. After all, every Rolex is a good Rolex, and there are no bad Rolex watches. But even though every Rolex is a good watch, not every Rolex is loved by everyone, but Rolex will still be a well-known brand. And these watches that aren't as popular might have their day soon, after all, who knows? If you enjoy this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button, click subscribe, and hit the notification bell to receive updates in our latest videos. Also, feel free to leave us a comment if you want to watch more videos. Head on over to our channel to see more from Lux Live. See you!